Hello, everyone. My name is Danae O'Brinson, and I work with the Fulbright Program at the U.S. Department of State Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs, and I'm a proud graduate of Spelman College and Georgetown University. We are very excited to celebrate Black History Month and celebrate Fulbrighters of African descent who have benefited from international education and exchange. The State Department has various programs that prepare Americans for a global environment and attract future leaders from abroad to study, learn, and exchange experiences. For those of you who are not familiar with the Fulbright Program, I'd like to give a brief overview of the Fulbright Program. Fulbright is the flagship international educational exchange program sponsored by the U.S. government. The exchange program was created by the U.S. government in 1946 with an ambitious goal to increase mutual understanding and support friendly and peaceful relations between the people of the United States and people of other countries. Today, I'll be talking with alumna Chiamaka, also known as Chichi Bukachuku, about her experience in Belgium as a Fulbright U.S. student in biology in the years 2017 through 2018. Chichi also served as a Fulbright Alumni Ambassador in 2019. Each year, around 20 Fulbright Alumni Ambassadors are selected from hundreds of alumni applications to serve as representatives, recruiters, and the voices of the Fulbright Program. To start, Chichi, could you please introduce yourself for the audience? Hi, everyone. Um, as Danao mentioned, my name is Chiamaka, but I also go um, by Chichi. I identify as a first-generation Nigerian-American, um, but born and raised and grew up in New Jersey. Um, I did my Fulbright to Belgium um, on a research grant in biology at the Dudouf Institute, where I was studying mechanisms of antibiotic resistance as a means to um, prevent deaths caused by bacterial infections worldwide. And now currently, I am a third year PhD candidate in the Department of Pharmacology at the University of Michigan, and I'm studying ways to correct disrupted um, heart function, specifically looking at ways to prevent arrhythmia, which is when your heart beats irregularly, um, so that we can restore healthy heart function and prevent and or treat disease. Chi Chi, would you tell us more about your journey to Fulbright and what inspired you to apply to the program? Yeah, I've always wanted to travel abroad, but really live like a local. I didn't really want to have like a touristy experience. And I started thinking about this towards the time of finishing um, my master's program. And I was thinking, what could I do where I could have that intercultural experience that I wanted while also doing something meaningful that would have a positive impact on the world through science? And so I wandered over to our career center on campus and reached out to an advisor and said, hey, I would love to move abroad and possibly continue doing science for a year or two. And they referred me to our International Institute. And so I went over there and met with an advisor there, Bill Nolting, who then told me about the Fulbright program. He was like, oh, this would be a perfect fit for what you're interested in. Um, they have a number of different grants, but they also have research grants where you can work as a scientist overseas in the country of your choice. So then I was like, yeah, this is perfect. Like this, this is literally exactly what I was looking for. So I was so excited to hear about that. And pretty much from that point on, um, I glued myself to the hip of the International Institute. Um, I talked to my advisor, Matt Chapman, about um, helping me find labs overseas that were doing work um, that I had expertise in. Um, and from then on, I just went full steam ahead to prepare an application. With that being said, what advice would you give to others interested in applying to the Fulbright program? I think the biggest piece of advice I have for anyone interested in applying to Fulbright is networking. And by that, I mean reaching out to people that you know, anyone and everyone, whether that's colleagues, other scholars, definitely advisors. Uh, if you're still in school, definitely reaching out to resources on campus. So I would say talk. Talk about the things you're passionate about, what you're excited about. and always, always, always ask for help um, from your friends, from your mentors, from your communities. Um, I think that will make it make a huge, huge impact in preparing a strong application. What we really want to know today 
is how did the Fulbright experience impact your life, both professionally and personally? Having the experience of being a Fulbrighter has allowed me to talk about things that have made me uh, you know, a better leader um, in my community. So I can talk about the experience of having to move somewhere new that I've never been. I can talk about building intercultural competency. I can talk about building networks and doing meaningful work um, overseas, translating that into different cultures. And so I've been able to speak to my Fulbright experience when I apply for leadership roles in organizations or fellowship applications, um, you know, being representative, uh, a, a representative on my campus for um, certain groups. And then I would say personally, the biggest thing that comes to mind is I think Fulbright really just kind of raised the bar to new heights for me. I think prior to going on this grant, I just, you know, I would see people move abroad or do kind you know, exciting work or research overseas and just kind of feel like that wasn't something that I could do. Or, you know, there was just a certain type of person that's just like built for moving overseas. Um, but participating in Fulbright, I mean, Fulbright completely, you know, shattered that perception I had. Um, now I feel like I can move anywhere um, overseas. I can do anything anywhere if I put my mind to it and just, you know, work really hard. Chi Chi, while you were on your Fulbright program, you were inspired to create Fulbright Noir. Tell us more about that, um, what inspired you to do so and how it developed. I started Fulbright Noir um, after realizing that I was the only Black person in my cohort at the start of the grant. I remember coming to my Fulbright orientation in Belgium and looking around the room and seeing like, okay, yep, I'm the only one, which is something, you know, an experience that I'm used to um, being a Black woman in STEM and science. And so while I wasn't entirely surprised, I did feel kind of just disheartened, um, mainly because, you know, being a part of this program was just such an exciting and amazing and wonderful experience. I just thought, wow, like I wish more people like me that identified like me could, could participate in this. And so the first thing that came to mind was, you know, let's, you know, create a platform where Black scholars can see themselves represented. Um, I think, you know, I recognize the value and the importance of seeing yourself in the positions that you aspire to be in. So I was inspired from the Instagram account Travel Noir, which highlights Black people who travel all over the world. And so that's where the name Fulbright Noir came from. And so I reached out actually to a few other um, grantees who were on Fulbright grants at the time and our co-founders of Fulbright Noir, uh, Sunita Moss, Desiree Daring, who were doing grants in France and Spain respectively. Um, and together we worked to build this organization as a resource to highlight the work of Fulbright, Black Fulbright scholars in the program, um, but also working to provide resources to help them serve more effectively um, as Black cultural ambassadors. I think we realized we had a very unique experience as Black people overseas and wanted to make sure that, you know, we built in, um, a strong support system for those scholars. Congress passed legislation in 1986, which designated February as National Black History Month. Today, I wanted to ask, what is the significance of Black History Month for you? For me, it, it reminds me, you know, I too am America, as Langston Hughes says, um, you know, all of our collective experiences contribute um, to the fabric of this country, which is, you know, I think, given um, the climate at times, whether that be through, you know, COVID-19 disproportionately affecting Black people, whether that be, um, you know, uh, racial justice movements related to Black Lives Matter, I think sometimes it's hard to feel um, like you are a part of this country or that you are American. And so I, I appreciate having time to celebrate what we've accomplished here as a reminder that, you know, we, we are this country too. Absolutely. Absolutely. 100%. This year in 2021, we're celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Fulbright program. And I wanted to know, what do you envision for the future of the Fulbright program? The first thing that comes to mind is I want Fulbright to be a program that everyone can see themselves reflected in and that they all feel like they have access to. So 
I envision kind of that being more of the narrative or incorporated into the narrative of Fulbright, where anyone from any background, um, any discipline will feel like, hey, this is a program that I can be a part of um, to represent America. And I am a part of that story. That's the end of our time. Thank you, uh, Chi Chi, again, for this amazing discussion. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today in celebration of our flagship Fulbright program and Black History Month. Please be sure to connect with the Fulbright program on social media and join in the 75th anniversary celebrations at fulbright75.org. <laughs> <laughs>